Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So it's been a while since we rolled out a video. I've been extremely busy with the changes here at the shop with Hannah and Josh going off to college and just trying to get things back to normal, whatever normal is. Uh, but I think at this point we've achieved that and I've got my scheduling kind of all figured back out. So we'll get back in the swing of uh, getting out videos on a regular basis. Um, I had some sweet stuff last week too. I won't uh, tease you with what all it was, but uh, just it just the way it worked out, I just wasn't able to record it. But anyhow, we've got this uh, Nissan Altima here. Uh, I came in with exhaust leak. The uh, front pipe here on the catalytic converter is all rusted out. Uh, so I've got a new converter assembly. Now I didn't just splice this pipe or you know cut a section out because it's kind of unique in the sense that it's a pipe but it's all flattened right out. Uh, where it runs underneath here, which you'll see. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. We'll get this converter swapped out, see if we run any trouble along the way. Hopefully we don't. And uh, take it from there. So here is the converter. Here's the pipe I was telling you about. So this is flat right out. And you can see it's all, it's all rotted out right through here. It's super thin. It's just one of the bands off the heat shields, but uh, it's all cracked down through here and just you know, real thin, of course, you know, the flex pipe at some point is going to give up the ghost, but essentially we've got to unbolt it. This is, uh, you know, potentially a problem area uh, because it's so rusty, so hopefully we can heat these and get those out. Uh, and then we've got, well, what do we have? We have one oxygen sensor here, and then it should be another one here ahead of the converter. Yep, we got one right here. Uh, those two are both also potential problems. We'll deal with them once we get them down. We'll just get them unplugged. And hopefully get this thing out of here. Now I see it's got a couple studs here. We could probably just take the torch, pull the nuts off them, hopefully save these studs. I did not get any new nuts for it. And I don't stock any fine thread metrics, oddly enough. So that's probably what we'll do. We'll just take the torch, cut them nuts off, run some thread chasers over those. I suppose if it comes down to it, we could always just, you know, blast these out with torch, use nuts and bolts, but uh, we'll try to preserve this flange as much as possible. I think first thing first, we'll get the uh, O2 sensors unplugged. If we can. Get a little pocket screwdriver here. Hopefully. There we go, there's that one. We'll unplug the front one. I say that way there when we take it down we'll mess with them out on the floor that way you know hopefully hopefully they'll come out uh, I did not quote on them but I did tell the customer that you know if they don't come out that is a potential problem there, that one wasn't too bad all right uh, I suppose we can cut the we'll cut the nuts off the back there Get the wire from the other two out of the way, we'll get the torch because we're probably going to need it to heat up these bolts also. I don't know if these bolts on the front, if they go all the way through, which they don't appear to, so that's good. A lot of times when the bolts extend all the way through a flange, of course, the um, you know the thread sticking through, they get super rusty, and then you got to try to pull all that through. What I'll do in that situation, I'll just cut the bolt off flush where it protrudes through and then take it out. That way, you're not trying to drag all them rusty threads through, but these ones have Appear, at least the two that I can see appear to just be flush with that flange. Oh, the only thing that sucks about torching stuff that's rusty is when it starts popping at you. Now we just fall down your shirt. Or they get you in the lift.
well. All right, so we will give these a little jiggle. I think I got a little too close to the one stud. close to it, but I think it's uh, hopefully salvageable. I, I know the backlighting really isn't ideal, but it's what we got to work with. Well, I just knocked the camera right clean off the cart. That's why that clip ended a little early. I'm going to heat up around these studs a little bit. Appears to be seized on there pretty good, so hopefully we can break that bond a little. Heat them up, air hammer. I might have to go get a big nasty. This old Mac air hammer is pretty well seen its time. It's gotten rebuilt a couple times, but it's, it's pretty weak. So we heat it up, hopefully it breaks that little rust bond between the flange and the stud. That's my goal, anyway. Get these old two sensor wires back. Comes down to it, I'll just cut the flange. We need that tension. Let's see what happens now. All right. I heard it. All right, it's separated now. It's all needed. Heat it, beat it. Ah, da, da, da. Where can I put this where it's not annoying? Maybe somewhere it's in there. All right, so we're gonna try on the flange bolts before we heat them. We're just gonna stick. Not a 14, maybe a 13. I'll grab another socket. We'll give them a little bit of pressure and see what they feel like. You just never know. Sometimes the ones that look real ugly will come right out, no problem. Slipped off. You guys all thought it broke me too. Well, look at that. It broke right loose, huh? Oh, 13 is not fitting that one. They used to be 14, I'm assuming. Well, let me grab something a little different. Oh, what do we got? There's nothing in between 13 and 14. That's awesome. No American sizes, anyways. So we'll go back to our 14. Sweet! Look at that, folks. Some days it's better to be lucky than it is good. Of course, we're still using the old Harbor Freight Earthquake here, which I've been using a lot. Not gonna lie, I'm gonna buy the half inch gun. Even though this thing smells like a uh, straight electrical fire every time I use it. It is getting better. The, the older one I first used it was pretty strong. Well, looky looky. So now we'll take this uh, little cross member piece here off. Should be 12, I think. I thought they were. I'm so wrong on my sides today. We'll try this 13. They should be 12. But... Ah. 
They didn't break. That's a miracle. Lots of miracles happening today, folks. Exhaust hanger, which is probably a 13, also. Let's see if we can get it out of that little guy. Is that the only one? Nope, there's two out there. Whoa! Well, there it is. It's off. Look at that. Slick as penguin snot. Alright, so we gotta get to that O2. I'm just gonna open up the heat shield for us a little. Make it a little bit easier. Man, I need some dark glasses. I can't see those. Try this again. Some kind of alloy. There she is. So we can see that now. We can see. Hole there. I'm sure there's more. This thing is pretty dang loud. Oh, yeah, some other holes up under this. Come on, little fella. Stronger than I am. I'll show you guys. Might as well just show you. We're here, you know. Let's try to make a video out of this, will you? the old rust hole. I thought I had more than just uh, these ones here. Of course we need to save this. We'll take that off but you can see she's pretty dang thin. Alright we'll save that. But yeah she's funky. Funky and punky. Alright I'm gonna go get a 22 wrench see if we can get them O2s out. But I think before we do that because I know I don't have the nuts to put back on these studs we probably ought to run a thread chaser over them look like a 10125 maybe yep so we'll grab a 10125 thread chaser probably ought to hose them down a little here comes another customer away with it. All right, well, I've got to tell you, that was a first for me. I just got accused of having, get this, faulty air in my air compressor. I can't make this up. He just stopped in, so that he used my air hose outside to fill up his air tires last week because all three tires leak profusely I guess and now since he used my air hose his rims are all corroded so and it's going to cost him $425 to have it fixed at a body shop and wanted to know what I could do about it which answer was nothing I can't do anything about it <sighs> Monday Faulty air. 
says I got some kind of gut rot in my air compressor. <laughs> I showed him my oil separator and my water separator. There's an air machine next door to the laundromat that's $1.50, but everybody uses my free air. Whatever. So I just used uh, just a thread chaser. So it comes in, uh, you know, this little thread chaser kit here. This is now, I've had this thing since little Moby Dick with a sardine. So there it is. I think um, I should be able to find one of these. I'm sure snap on doesn't make it. It's probably Lyle or somebody. If I find it, I'll put a link in the description box. <sighs> Thing. We'll get this cleaned up. So I'm going to be using just your standard two-inch cookie. Now I had a company send me these. I don't know how you pronounce it. Doka, Doka Zoo, Doka this. Just you know, regular standard two-inch cookies. You buy them on Amazon, 30 pack. Comes with 10 coarse mediums and fine grit discs. So they look just like your regular standard two-inch. You know, 3M. Quick connect. You want me to look at them? See if I like them. I, I use Norton's and 3M's here in the shop usually. So I can't say they're any any better, any worse. I know they cost less. So another way to get that off, if I just took the cutting torch and just heated that up, that big chunk of rust would have just flaked it off. That's a free tip for you. Sometimes that's the easiest way to clean up like exhaust manifolds and stuff. Just use your torch, heat it up, all the stuff blows off. So needless to say, I'll put a link in the description where you can pick these up, be a good homeowner kit or even in the shop I suppose. Like I said, I'm going to keep using them to see how they work. I've been using them a little bit here and there. cheap ones what I've seen in my experience because I've bought some bargain basement ones the backing flies off them so the most uh, quick connect here where it's glued on will usually fly off I've seen that on some of the you know when you get a deal it's too good to be true oh, Vinny stopped by for his daily visit all right so this O2 is the front one Pop right loose again another miracle so we'll reuse that. Of course, people are probably screaming like, you know, they would have changed them and bought them all new and this and that. But there's no codes, no problems, nothing like that. So I'm not just going to throw 300 plus dollars worth of O2 sensors in it. Just because, now I have seen from experience taking out O2 sensors. And then shortly thereafter, getting a O2 sensor heater code. And I don't know if that's because of the shock, you know, taking them out or what it is, but 
cross that bridge when it comes. Right, so we got our new one, got the gaskets. We'll take and put our uh, O2 sensors in. But we'll never sneeze on the threads. And the front one was the one with the shorter wire. So take and stick that in. Oops. I can't believe he said I had bad hair. That's what ruined his rims. You ever heard of salt, dude? New York? I just can't believe it. I mean, I, mean, I can, but I can't. Is that 22? It's got a... Nope. Oh, what size is that? 18 or something? Probably. <sighs> This is a Cali Cat, California certified for New York State and California. The only place in the freaking world that has to use these, which kind of sucks because it makes the cost of the converters almost OEM cost. In this case, it was cheaper to buy the Walker Cali Cat. But if we don't install California certified converters, in the great state of New York on California cars, it is a $25,000 fine. Awesome. Now we gotta fill out all the paperwork and then hold on to the old one for so many days and blah, blah, blah. All that crap. I can't believe he said I had bunk air. Sure we'll hear about it in the comments. And it was free. Free air. I ruined his rims. I should go stand in the corner. Oh, where's my knife? <clears throat> Man, I'm all miscombobulated. I don't even know where my knife is. So we got the rear gasket. This must be the front gasket. This is stuck on the old one. I think there is a flange. So there's a little flange that sits over for the front. And then, it, I don't know if you noticed, but when we're cleaning that, it is kind of concave. So that must fit up in there. Oh, you son of a monkey. I think this gasket is a little bit different. Oh, damn it all the heck. I'm glad I saved the old gasket which is just a multi-layer steel gasket in good condition. Luckily we didn't torch it. So this is the one catalog, I looked this up myself, is the gasket that's supposed to be there. And you can see if I line up the holes, we're about uh, what half a hole off there anyways on that side. The inner diameter is wrong. Oh, what did I do with the bag that I just ripped in half like a gorilla? DOS gasket. Well, it's one of these two bags. Well, that sucks. <sighs> Freaking Walker. They always have cataloging issues, it seems. I'm going to go double check 100%, make sure there's not another gasket optional number or some crap. 31350 or 539. We ordered a 31540. So, that's like close. Sons of monkeys. So, anyhow, fortunately, they have the right one. Ow. So it'll be up here shortly and we'll carry on. All right, round two. The right gasket showed up, it fits wonderfully. Let's stick this up here temporarily, anyways. Get the back tightened down. I did get a couple of these nuts. Face dirty. Get them put on here. Getting about time for a new tripod, and that one's getting a little whooped. Whoa. Looks like we need some wash. 
gosh, there's a slot to there, a little bigger than the factory ones. Where am I? There we go. There's a, uh, been pretty hectic here today. Typical Monday. waiting for the uh, gasket to show up. I never sneezed all our bolts. So when we have to do this again, everything should come apart. Hopefully as easy as it did this time. I have to make sure our flange bolts line up first before I get too far. That wouldn't be very good. Looks like they'll be pretty close. Gonna need a little bit of tweakage. Where does this go? Oops, did not go that way, went this way. Flex plate. Come on, start, little guy, start. Oh, I think it did. Let's see. Let's see if we can drop down a little bit. What about this one. All right, now we should be able to get the other one. started. That's our 13. Well, I hope our new gasket seals. Which one was our 13? This one? I don't like the way that flange sits flat there, flat there. I guess I can see the gasket. I don't know, we'll fire it up, see what happens. Let me plug in this front uh, O2 sensor here. Where'd that plug in? That plugged in right over here. That sucker sits off of close to that drive shaft. I want to zip tie. It was probably attached to this metal bracket, you know, from the factory. It looks like it was. 
So we're gonna have to throw a zip tie on that because it sits like a half inch away from the uh, drive axle there. And same in the back, there's a uh, metal tab that looks like where it used to go. Pretty salt. Well. Sounds good. Nice and quiet. Way quieter than it was when I pulled it in, I'll tell you that. Things sound like NASCAR. Here, oh, we'll do this little guy over right here. Oh, See, I'm pretty sure it probably had something factory that was installed around this metal bracket to keep it, you know, off the exhaust. So, stick that on there. Nothing to worry about. perhaps ish 0908 uh, it's got the 25 in it little four banger pretty easy uh, assuming you get the right parts would you want to do it without a torch probably not at least not on an old rusty one like this because uh, you know we have torched the nuts off which is other ways you could do it you know you could always just cut them off and then spin the threads out and, you know get new studs and whatnot other than that that was it pretty thankful the O2s came out and all that stuff uh, links to the two inch cookie discs and the thread chaser in the description box below if you're interested in them. And we'll leave it at that. I'm gonna move on to the next job so we can find something cool to record. And if I do, you guys will be the first to know. I'll be the first to know, you'll be the second to know, anyways. And uh, find us on our socials, all that business. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.